So hi and welcome to In the Chair with Tabitha JK. I am very excited today to have um, another very special guest in my chair. This is Jarvis Smith from My Green Pod. First of all, Jarvis, I think it'd be really, really nice if we um, start by you sharing a little bit about what My Green Pod is, because if anyone hasn't heard and doesn't know, um, I'm sure they do, but anyone who doesn't, <laughs> let's, let's kind of um, start by telling me a little bit more about what you're up to with My Green Pod and what My Green Pod stands for. Okay, well, we haven't reached 7 billion people yet, so I guess not seven everybody's... Billion. No, I said we haven't reached 7 <laughs> billion. No, no, so. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, but what a great goal, hey? Yeah, right? Well, that's everybody on the planet. So <laughs> my, my, exactly. my feeling is if we can touch everybody on the planet with, with kind of what we, we're creating, then that we will have... I you like know, big goals, that's objective. cool. <laughs> <laughs> Always aim high. Although there's 7.5 billion now, I think, so it's going <laughs> well, up all the time. maybe there's a little bit that won't, won't it? <laughs> Very cool. So My Green Pod is, um, is really a movement, actually. I mean, I, I would definitely describe it as a movement because that was what the business was founded on. Yeah. Yes, we are a business and yes, we're a media company and we, we, we're a communication company. Um, but essentially, we're a, um, a movement that is inspiring people that want to live more sustainably with a website and with a magazine and, um, and we also have an awards as well, as you know, the P Awards. And they're, they're, they're essentially these products that I can't really find anywhere else in the world that is doing anything exactly like we are. And we launched a business 10 years ago. And really, it was based on the principles that most people want to live more harmoniously, either with themselves, their family, with nature, with each other, with yeah. the communities, right? But most people find it quite difficult to do because, you know, mainstream advertising is just ramming products down people's, you know, throats, and then they feel, oh, you know, the next door neighbour's buying it, so therefore we should be buying it. And actually, that whole process of economics in the country has led us down a really, really dirty, slippery mm. path. Yeah. And before we fall off the cliff completely, there is an opportunity for us to perhaps rectify some of the issues that are going to basically kill humanity. Yeah. So we're trying to address those issues in a way that people understand, and it's by giving them inspirational stories and ins inspiring products that we call heroes, which you are, uh, your products are are heroes on our website. Thank you. And, and little sound bites so that people can find a very quick and easy shortcut back to perhaps where they really want to be rather than perhaps where they where are. Life has taken them. Yeah, so it's a really broad kind of outline, but it's, it's not so really. Cool. It is cool because we're, I mean, we're essentially an ethical media company. Yeah. And we're now the largest in the UK, the largest independent ethical media company in the UK. That's amazing. Well done you. Thank you. Well done you. Thank and that's you. 10 years of hard work and dedication to the cause. <laughs> yeah. kind of well, uh, yes. I mean, it, it's, a, it's been a commitment, but it's been absolutely a passionate yeah. commitment. It's never been a troubled commitment. It's been like, this is what we want to do. Let's do it. I see it in you. It's like when you're doing something you love, it's like there's just not a day that's hard work. It doesn't feel like work, does it? It's just no. sharing the love around yeah. what you're doing and Completely. the excitement around that. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. And, and um, what, what I think is, you know, sometimes I question, is this a bit sad? Because most of my friends now are people that we do business with. I've had, it's become so, <laughs> I'm so immersed in, the, in this, this role. And, and my role feels like an, I'm, I'm an ambassador for the earth. Yeah. And it seems oh. like I'm becoming an ambassador now for the universe oh. because I've learned some <laughs> some more stuff. So Hello, put it there. Hello. I know. Hello. Hello, <laughs> Hello ambassador. ambassador. And universal <laughs> ambassador. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> we are the, I mean we are the, the new that. we're the new global nations. Yes. Forget the United Nations because <laughs> that's crumbling literally as we speak. I mean Trump's just announced today that he's taking America back to becoming a sovereign nation. And I think that's what Brexit and these things are about. We won't go down the B word, because mm -hmm. I know you no. want a nice positive. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go there. Yeah, yeah. No, um, I, that's so fascinating. I just love that um, by staying, you know, just, just bringing... All the, obviously, all that's been born out of your, your um, how you feel about life what you see could be your vision of the world being a better place and just just what that could look like and actually 
then in starting this, you know, you've got the skills and the connections to and your to start a media company, and then that you turn it in, into that you evolve it as something that is. Well, it started as something that is totally there to connect, to make the world a better place. I mean, it's no, you know, you've always got a smile on your face, Jarvis, every <laughs> time I see you, and that's why, because uh, no. you're so fulfilling your purpose. It's yeah. just yeah. the best way to work. And I can totally relate to that, because you know, I just feel really privileged in my work, too, that I've always had that. I've been yeah. an organic hairdresser for 20 years yeah. now. You know, I've listened, I love going to work. Every day is different, but... And I'm not just hairdressing all the time now, I'm built, doing lots of other things, but the whole the whole kind of just going to work with purpose is just so fantastic. It really is, yeah. yeah. And really feeling is. like you can, your whole self can show up as well. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, because there's, no, there's nowhere to hide, is there, when you're, when you're kind of truly living your purpose. Yeah. And I, I mean, it's interesting you use, you use the terms your vision, because actually it definitely wasn't my vision. Oh, it was a vision yeah. that was given to me by, by, by Gaia, that, you know, our planet, the Earth. So there's a bit of a story with that, so I'll share it with yeah, you very quickly. Yeah, I'd love to hear. I was, um, I was invited to go on to a TV show called Dumped, and it was on Channel 4, and right. um, nobody really knew what the show was about, but we all knew, those of us that were invited onto the show, we all knew that we were going to be put into an extreme environment that would highlight um, the damage that we were doing to the planet. So most of us thought, um, well, I, in fact, forget most, I certainly thought we were off to Borneo or to the desert or to the Arctic or, yeah. you know, one of these really challenging environments. And actually, we were sent to a landfill in Croydon oh my goodness. and we had to live there for three weeks. And, and the show was called Dumped because we were literally dumped on a landfill with nothing. My goodness. So the first night we slept in a... There were 11 of us. The first night we slept in a container... And they had, you know, the, it was Channel 4, so they had the stereotypical um, TV personality characters. So they had, you know, the black guy that was a little bit arrogant and a bit, ooh, didn't give a shit kind of vibe. They had the model, they had the gay guy, they had um, a, 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 um, a Navy um, engineer. You know, some, some really cool people, amazing people. And I was the hippie. Right. I was, I was invited <laughs> on because a TV researcher had met me on another TV show. Right. And, at the, and you know, I was kind of, I was practicing yoga and a Reiki master and was a bit wacky and, you know, and so he thought he'd be quite entertaining on TV because this guy <laughs> thinks he can talk to trees. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and, um, and so I was invited, and in fact, I was the only one invited onto the show out of everybody else applied, like in a Big Brother type style. Right, right. And I obviously didn't do it for fame because if I was after fame, I would have gone for Apprentice or Big Brother or something yeah. like that. So this yeah. was in 2007. So when I talk about it wasn't my vision, it was the Earth's vision. And there was a moment in the TV show, um, it's toward the end of the show, that we, um, they brought a, um, a dustbin truck. Um, that had just been around the local houses to collect, the, you know, the rubbish, the waste yeah. from people's, came onto our site and dumped it. And we had to dress up in these kind of overalls and gas masks, and it wasn't quite that bad, but, you know, yeah. protective clothing, yeah. and siphon, siphon through this, this rubbish and, and actually pick out what could be recycled and what couldn't. Right. So it was to really highlight, you yeah. know, that actually what we're throwing away has a value. Yes. And, and, and obviously plastic was a massive issue. Now, bearing in mind this is in 2007. Just going to say, yeah. when that was, yeah. Yeah, it was before most people were even... Conscious about conscious, the conversation. Exactly. So, yeah. so literally over 10 years ago, right? So they brought this dustbin truck. We had to start going through it. And within about 20 minutes of, of, of us kind of going through this stuff, picking out the bits of plastic that could be recycled, what we thought could be recycled, I started to feel ill like I had the worst hangover that I've ever experienced. And I wasn't the only one to get ill, but I got ill pretty quickly, and there was another lady that got ill pretty quickly. And I began to feel toxic, I had a headache, I felt nauseous, and so I just said to the guys, I'm not doing this anymore, I'm going to go and lie on the earth, and I'm going to release my um, toxicity back into the earth and ask the earth to replenish me, because that's how hippie I was. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, when you understand Reiki and energy and stuff like yeah, that, you can yeah, clear yeah. and you can... Yeah, you, you, yeah, you know. of course. So I did that, and they put a camera in my face and said, what's going on, Jarvis? And I said, well, I explained. And I closed my eyes, and I just connected with the earth. And in that moment, I had a, a real epiphany moment where I heard the earth talk to me and said, this, how you are feeling, is what you are doing to me. And unless you help, then I can't... You know, I can't fix this. I need you, not you, but yeah. all of you, yeah. humans, to help. 
Yeah. And it had such an impact on me. Yeah. I really felt that that conversation. So I went I went off and within about a few hours I committed to camera and I said the the job that I'm in I have a certain influence because I'm in advertising and selling advertising space and creating campaigns with brands. Yeah. I'm going to commit all of my not only personal life but my working life to um, getting the message out there. Amazing. And that was that was how it happened. Wow, what and a great story. It is That's a great incredible. story. And then after I went back to the publishers that I was working with and I said to them you know, this is what I want to do. I asked the guy that was on the TV show, a guy called Rob Holdway, who was like the presenter, the celebrity, to front the magazine. And I basically put the business model together. We did £150,000 worth of advertising. And uh, so clearly there was a business case. Yes. And we created the editorial with Rob and all the ideas and stuff. And then overnight it became uh, certainly Europe's biggest ethical lifestyle magazine. Amazing. But then what happened? The publishers then, because I negotiated a deal with the publishers and I took 30% of all profit, so I made you know, really decent money from it. Then the publishers thought, this is a good model, you know, we, we can do this and we don't need to be giving so much away. So they tried to do it themselves and essentially kicked me, kind of said, you know, this is how we move forward, take it or leave it. And I said, well, I'll leave it, thanks. So I took the idea to National Geographic. Right. I thought to myself, who's the biggest publishers in the world? It was National Geographic. So I took the idea to them, and within about three weeks of me speaking to them about it, I had a contract with National Geographic and actually created a magazine called National Geographic Green, which still lives today. Amazing. So it like went from, an idea, from the earth inspiring me to me having the courage to go and follow through, yeah. and then it becoming the world's biggest Ethical Lifestyle magazine. Amazing. And and then we're ten years down the line with our own product, which is My Green Pod, yeah. which is now distributed with the Guardian. And I love that you're then connecting that back to, you know, real things that exist now. So solutions. It's like now having gone through that journey of talking and, and awareness and campaigning and all the things that come through that journey. That now you've reached a point where you are actually putting that into a site that has product that is, you know, that people can find solutions. Because everybody's got such busy lives, like where do they go? To, where's the oracle? Where's the place yeah. where they can go and find some yeah. information to help them make some of those shifts? Yes. That, that, because, you know, the planet is crying, as you say. We're like, there's no time to waste now. We've, we've all got to, you know, our voices have got to be heard, haven't they? Yes. For, for things to shift at a much faster pace now. Absolutely. And, and, and we all, you know, individually, we can all make a difference. Yes. Yeah. And I, I've abided myself by the, you know, by Gandhian's words of, you know, be the change yeah. you want to see or wish to see or, or need to see in the world. And if, if you live by those principles, then I, I believe you co-create, you start to attract everything that, that works in harmony Definitely. with the energy of that and things just come in. So that's how, that's literally how our business has, has evolved. Amazing. That's so cool. And then last week I was spent time with you yeah. at um, another event that you've inst you've been a, a big part of instigating, um, which was the Spirit of Business event yeah. um, in at, up at Fintorn in Scotland. What an incredibly magical place to it's a host, profound, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and to, to, to you know to centre that conversation was just fantastic. But tell us a little bit about that. Where are you at with that right now? Well, I mean I believe that Spirit informs me, Source, God whatever you want to call it, the angels, everybody has a different relationship with what that, what that power is. Mm. So I call it source or spirit. And um, because I knew, you know, I knew firsthand that our business evolved in, in such a way, i.e. guidance from Gaia, me hearing, following through, that's kind of working in co-creation with spirit. Yeah. So I felt to myself that, um, you know, there's these new business entities coming along like B Corp, which is amazing. Yeah. It's very much about sustainability and being good to your staff and having the right supply chain. But for me, it still missed that element of spirit. Mm -hmm. It missed that kind of spiritual bit. And so the spirited business idea was really born from embracing that part which none of us are really talking about, but we all feel, yeah. right? <laughs> so it's like, why is this, why is this not... A regular conversation. You go yeah. to places like India and Mexico, and it's, you know, it is a very, very, um, on, you know, round the dinner table conversation. conversation yeah. But in the West, it's not. 
So I really wanted to embrace that as an idea. And so going to Findhorn, which is magical, you know, they say the veils are thin, so it's very easy to connect with nature or spirit or, you know, whatever your thing is, everybody has a way to connect. That's what I loved into interluding there a little bit on, on about Fintorn as well. It's like, what a, an amazing, you know, um, example of how harmonious people can be. You know, there something like 40, 45 different spiritual practices all going on there yeah. in, one, and yeah. in one place. And, and that people are just living, and the power that that creates by all of those elements coming together is just incredible. Absolutely. Absolutely incredible. It is, it is, it's amazing. And for me, it was like, you know, I have to do a 20 to 40 minute practice in the mornings. Otherwise, I'd just get reasonably stressed quite quickly because of just, you know, day to day actions that you have in a business. Yeah. So if I do my practice, I can, I can create a space that is wholesome and nourishing and I feel like I'm not losing my way because I feel connected yeah, and supported. Yeah. Yeah. But in Findhorn, you just wake up and you're there. Like, <laughs> it's like, you don't really need to do your practice. <laughs> but out of Findhorn, I need to do my practice. And I think what, 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 what that is a really good example of is that actually, that's a community with so many, with much, such diversity mm. and international people, um, all, all races and colours and creeds. Everything, everybody's and, represented. And, yeah, yeah. And, and, and it works. Yeah. So that's like that's a perfect example of how our planet could be. Mm -hmm. It's just a micro yeah. version. Definitely. So my thing is like, okay, if it can happen micro, it can happen macro, and that yes. that's what I'm about at the moment. Is really yeah. kind of take the inner work outwards, and yeah. I think what's happened is is people are taking the outer work inwards, and there's a, there's a bit of a mismatch. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I um, I guess my own personal spiritual journey has been had taken lots of different paths along the way and I kind of had this discovery and the one consistent for me is being out in nature, is yes. being outside and yeah. connecting through either the nature itself or through animals in nature yeah. and, and sort of um, you know, I've sort of my, so my practice has been about getting outside, getting and just sort of taking whatever my issues of the day have been. I my, I tend to have my space at the nice. end of the day, so I reconnect before oh, I go yeah. for my rest, as it were, when I come to the end of my, you know, day preparing to sleep or whatever. Yeah. Um, and that just kind of you know just in, invite, invite source. I love that word. I love I. I I hadn't looked at it that way, but that for me, when I heard you say it, resonated perfectly. Oh, nice. um, and to just just to kind of like be guided back to what's really important and to yeah. stay on track. Yeah. Um, and just even just something as simple as having my feet on the earth yes. and on the ground. And yes. I have horses and I keep them on an organic farm, and it's like actually then just being I, that feels like sacred soil because yeah. it's not spoiled. It's it's authentic. It's showing up as real. Yeah, natural as it, it would be yes, you know there's something yeah. about that engagement that just helps to center me and and it is that centering i know is is because i'm just channeling back yeah. to um yeah to, 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 to a higher source yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and that, you <laughs> and know what beautiful it, it is beautiful mm. and, and and you know that's that's the gift i believe that we as human beings have got as we've incarnated into this what we call a kind of 3D reality, yeah. whereas actually science is proving it's it's all everything is connected. I mean, they've, science has even proven now that spirit and physical, you know, the the, the being spirit and its physical are definitely connected. Yeah. So science is proving what we already feel and know. Yeah. But I was really really lucky because I was you know quite a wild person when I was younger and got into all kinds of mischief and thankfully got put myself in such a physical state that I needed to find some form of recovery. Mm -hmm. So I went to find, I was a friend of mine actually, we were up all night kind of being naughty as you do and he started talking about Reiki. And I just thought, oh, I, yeah, I can feel that. So I, I love the fact that you connect with nature because I, I wish I'd found it, not that easy, but I wish I'd found that connection. I, I had to go through quite a kind of a, a, an awakening. You know, some people call it a shamanic awakening, but you know, I was, quite troubled, I was you know, drinking a lot and taking drugs and just doing stuff that was not particularly good for me. And my body just rejected it and said, right, well, enough is enough. And one night I was up chatting to a friend of mine and he'd started talking about Reiki, he'd been for a Reiki session. I was like, wow, what's that? And um, 
he told me about it, and I just instantly knew that would be something I, I, I could try. Right. He just spoke to you. Yeah, just spoke to me. So I went for a Reiki session and uh, met this really amazing guy. And on my third session, I felt this overwhelming feeling of joy, bliss, ecstasy. And I knew what it felt like to be an ecstasy because, <laughs> you know, I've been out raving and, <laughs> and experienced those kind of things. But um. And it just was absolutely transformational for me. And I thought, well, if I can feel like that from somebody just putting their hands over me and cleaning my chakras and like, it was all a bit wacky, but now I totally get it, then that, then that means, you know, I, I can do this living cleanly. And so I really went on this spiritual journey. And on my spiritual journey, I met a, a, a lady that is described as a shaman. Right. And she actually taught yoga with sacred sound. Right. So I was doing the Reiki, I then became a Reiki master after five years or six years or something. And during that time I met a yoga teacher who was a shaman, she could, you know, she could hear plants, talk to her and things like that. I mean, wow. really, really connected. <laughs> and I studied with her um, religiously, in the true term of, of religiously, um, for over 10 years, ne wow. nearly 14 years. Wow. Amazing. And I did a weekly or by or, or um, yeah weekly yoga session. Yeah. And we did about three or four retreats a year, and some of them were in Glastonbury at a place called Earth Spirit, and we just really connected, often with the same group of people. So you build a massive amount of trust, and we also went on pilgrimages to you know to Machu Picchu and Hawaii swimming with dolphins, and so it was all yoga, sound, and connecting with the earth. So I, I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't even think you could connect with the earth. Yeah. But after that, ten years of, of you know, conscious growth, yeah. personal growth, I began to hear. I began to feel the pulse of the earth, and I began to feel the earth move, and I began to connect with, you know, voice. I'd communicate with with beings that I couldn't see, you know, but I could hear them. But not here. I could hear them here. And that was that, and that was how it how it evolved for me. But I was practicing two to four hours of yoga a day, and wow. I was deeply ingrained in you know. And I, I mean, I even spent a year not watching any TV or reading any newspapers, just lying on my bed and reading spiritual books. And then I began to kind of, I don't know, maybe download information or some. I don't know why, I don't know how it works, but it works for me. That's so that was my so kind of, that was yeah. my, and then I, thankfully I kept the practice up, so I practice, I have a Kriya that I practice every morning before I start my day. That is so cool. And the practice is important, isn't it? You yeah, need, You need yeah. to find something in your life that helps you to that reconnect. helps you to reconnect and have something, yeah, definitely. I mean, gosh, I'm in awe of that. That's just, wow, what an incredible life journey to have um, had that opportunity to get so deep into learning the practice with masters. Yes, and yeah. And then, and, that, and of course, that that reveals something very true. Yes. And, um, yeah. It was amazing. And, and what, it, what it taught me, actually, you know, if I were really to, to, to write it on the back of a fact packet, what it taught me was to listen to the body and not just try and in intellectually understand things, to feel it. Mm -hmm. And if your body is not going, yep, yeah, this, is, this is right, then questioning, you know, what your awesome. reaction is and, 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 and how it could be better. So it's like listening to the body and the inner voice, and then all you know now it's very much. You know, about I mean, so much of our language that we use in society all relates back to that, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, like trusting your gut, trusting your gut feeling. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, just it, we've lost so much of that in yeah. our everyday lives, and this has been going on for you know a good number of years now, several decades of yes. us just coming away from having any sense of. Um, of, of any form of connection, and it, you know, it might have in the past maybe it looked very religious in the in a sort of um, mm. you know from from different types of church and different types of dogma and things that people are now kind of really pulled away from and don't want to feel told how to feel. But actually, the the reality is you don't have to. Nobody has to necessarily tell you because what ultimately you got to by learning that stuff was that it is all yes. here. Yes. Yeah. So you have a kind of, you have a radar, yeah. and if the radar's, you know, clean, yeah. and, uh, and, you know, yeah, I mean, just, uh, it, it, it's an awareness, a level of awareness. And I always had a radar as a child, actually, because I grew up in a, in a, in a fairly 
you know, uncomfortable environment. My mum chose men that used to beat her up and stuff, and it was horrible. And so my radar was really acute because mm -hmm. I could, you know, if there was a bit of tension arising and there was going to be, you know, it was going to get 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 heavy, I could feel it really quickly. Yeah. So I was able to kind of, you know, I learnt the ability to have acute um, senses yeah. through what is perceived to be a really negative childhood experience. Yes. But actually, I wouldn't be the person that I am today with yeah, such a, an acute, you know, sense if that if I hadn't been through those experiences. Mm -hmm. And if you kind of think, oh, maybe we choose our life and our experience and the people we have around us before you come in, then it kind of is like, yeah, I probably chose those situations so I could do what I'm doing today. Yeah, isn't that interesting? <laughs> it really is. It really it is. Really, yes. It's a whole other way to look at things. It is. It is. I'm just so excited to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Just, it's nice to meet a kindred spirit because it really you, is. you yeah. totally are on that. Yeah. <laughs> and it's you know, and some of the stuff for me is unspoken too because it's not I can't necessarily relate it to um, to learn. You know, I haven't I haven't done textbook stuff and I haven't learned this stuff um, from from reading about it or having other teachers teach me. So yeah. it hasn't come through other people yeah. necessarily yeah. for me. Yeah. It's been around. Um, just, just feeling really, yes, yes. and realizing what that feeling is. And as you say, you know, I've got a real concern going on with life or with business, and I'm like, no, just get it out of here, just bring it back in. And yeah. how does it feel? Live with it in here. Yes. And what's that telling me? Yeah. What's the sort of what? Yeah. What's the poet? Why am I? What am I supposed to do with that? I've yeah. got to listen. Yeah. And when I really listen to yeah. that inner voice as you say that's coming from just being still with it and and then you start to hear what you yeah, need to do absolutely you know and it's yeah. sort of i didn't know that was a thing <laughs> just thought that was how i you did know it. what it's, it's <laughs> I, I love you saying that because i've chosen to be in a male body in this life yes and katie when i met katie she was just living it and she's never had to practice she's, she's just and she shared some stuff with me about what she used to do as a child. If she, you know, if she was in an environment that was a bit, a bit hectic and a bit noisy, and she just kind of put this invisible veil over her, and, and and would just instantly feel connected. And and so, like you, it was just natural. She just mm. knew. She just had access to these abilities. And whereas me, I've done the real male thing. I've like gone away and you know nearly killed myself, and then had to study and, you know, put, put the practice in and real, real action-based stuff. And it, it's really beautiful, isn't it, the male and female principles? Because yes. now I, yes. I kind of try to be a more of a feminine male because allowing and trusting and receiving and all those graceful feminine qualities That's so lovely. Is, 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 you know, hopefully what I've become through this really solid yoga <laughs> yeah. practice and, but and everything else <laughs> but i think in us you know we have to have that that male and female energy is a natural part yes. of all of us isn't yeah, it it is and that we have that understanding that we need to be in tune with both sides of that in ourselves as well yeah and see that in others and in all the connectivity yeah. as well i think yeah yeah, I um, I've made a very lovely connection with your Katie in that way. I think we both she's kind of recognise that about yes. um, about each other. She's amazing, and we were yeah, just having is. a wonderful conversation and being very excited to <laughs> to know each other. All of us, it's just very. It exciting. is. It is. It is. It is lovely. We 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 definitely seem to be working as a team, don't we? Yes, like in all, definitely. In, together. Yeah. We're really even though we're apart, energetically we all seem really definitely. together. This, um, the whole idea of all the people coming together for spirited business as well, it was just so, so strong. It was but magical. everybody brought something really unique to the table. Mm, mm. And, they did. and there was a real um, presence of such, such diverse ideas, and, and, um, and that was uh, just to see that as a melting pot all together. But, but this, some people didn't even know why they were there. But no. it showed up. Yeah, and they're really like, I don't know why I'm here. Yes, people and were saying. people said that repeatedly. <laughs> well, no we've invited you, and Jane had invited you, and someone else had invited you. And but they were called to be but there, they said, and like then, the spirit had called them. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I think this idea that how that can be brought into business, you know, business yeah. that has a soul, that has, has a life force, and that life force is the people that come together in the room to be a part of what that business is. Yeah. I mean, I'm. Um, Dennis and I are, are, have been birthing this business of our, our product company um, over the last 
Oh gosh, actually it depends who I talk to. <laughs> Some people tell me it's 15 years. Yeah. Some people uh, know it as being three since yeah. our official launch. Yeah. Three and a half. Gotcha. Other people it's been five to six because it kind of started evolving embryonically from the salon as well. But you know how it's how we've sort of um, brought that together now and um, and now we're just about to sort of form the you know, bring together the people within our company who mm. are going to be the people that hold the space going forward because I'm really conscious, consciously aware that I do not want to build something just to sell it on just so I gain and then I move on and just see what happens. Yeah. That's not what I'm in this for. It's like yeah. this has been my life's work mm. to date. Mm. I really want it to evolve into something that goes on way beyond me. Mm. I'm just I'm yeah. just starting the conversation. And I'm try, I've tried to, we have tried to create something that's really authentic so that it just, in, it, in, its, in the fact that it is some, it, that it, it's being, um, starts to kind of set um, a new a standard of, of, of what that could look like. Yeah. I mean, we're just talking about shampoo here. Yes. And ways of, but the impact of what that does to humans and to the planet is yeah, massive negatively. Of course it is, of course it is yeah. um, And actually, when we do that right and stand in that space and say, no, when it can be done properly, mm. the knock-on and the ripple effect of that is just could be immense. And yes. I'm, I'm looking for people to come and join me and my, on my quest yeah. going forward with that within my business. And... and and I'm really keen, that's why I'm really happy to talk about our business in this way. Mm. I want mm. I want to be standing in that loud and clear so I attract people that want to bring, yes. uh, you know, want to come with spirit yes. and want to bring yes. that into the conversation because we've got to work quick now. I need power people yes. around me yeah. who who bring their, their full self, you know, and are ready to sort of really show up with this and let's do it together. Yeah, lovely. So I think, um, but also... Well, I know you've said it now. I know. Your, your order, your cosmic <laughs> ordering has, has, has gone out. Watch the, there'll be hundreds of thousands of people knocking at the door. <laughs> <That's so cool>. <laughs> <laughs> Probably only a few Karnat ones, the rest will be incarnate. Yes. <laughs> exactly. I've definitely got a team of incarnate beings that support and help me. Oh, got an wow. angelic PR team and a, you know, a, 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 you know, kind of sales team. And that's what I try and do is try and connect with my team, my angelic team and say, right, there's one of me and there's loads of you. <laughs> Can you go out and help me bring the business in, get my admin done, and you know? So I, I genuinely do. That's believe. so cool. Okay, I want to learn more about that job. Okay. That sounds really exciting. Okay, cool. Well, <laughs> the two things that you've said, which I think are beautiful, is is firstly you're saying, I'm ready. Yeah. So you've, the intention is there now; it's clear. So that's beautiful. And then the team bit is I was taught through my practice, not only taught, but if you like. Um, shown is a better word i was shown that there are lots of beings around and we could you can call them ancestors angels your, your guides you know there's so many terms for these yeah, yeah. incarnate beings and i began to see them and communicate with them as i said to you but what i realized is when i got into business is that yeah i need like everybody i needed to earn money and I needed to, you know, put a roof over our head and, you know, as you know, we've got children and, yeah. you know, so it's like really, really important functional things. But I didn't want to operate in a dysfunctional way. So by inviting the team to support and help me and inspire me, and I will promise to do my bit, pick up the phone, have good conversations, do the selling bit, you know, get my invoices done and all, you know, all the bits that you have to do. Yeah. But could you just make it easier for me? So I feel like I've got a team of like, I don't know, five or ten people working with me. That's and, amazing. And, but I still have to show up and do my bit. Yeah. So I'm very happy to, you know, to help you invite your team in. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Well, that's, that's something for another day, but I'm definitely <laughs> open to that. Cool, cool. That's so maybe, that's a, maybe that's a spin-off from Spirited well, Business no, Workshop. Well, I think so. I it. think it's lovely that are coming together of people who first kind of, you know, have this idea of wanting to be bringing. I mean, what we're talking about here is like, you know, channeling love into everything we do yeah, so that, that it becomes something that's, you know, going forward, this is a business that's alive with yeah. with energy and yeah. authenticity for the long term. We've got to we've got to help the planet right now and we've yes. got to make sure it stays on track. Yes. So we need yeah. we need that level of authenticity, don't we? We, to, do. we and, do. And none of us, mere mortals, can hold that space alone. No, no, <laughs> I mean you're right, because we are all connected. We're all from the same we're all from the same source. Mm. So um, what I think is magical about it at the moment is the you know the young people 
the, the, especially the really young ones, the, you know, as you know, Vivi, our two and a half year old, I mean, she's come in, it seems to me, fully aware, fully conscious, can instantly manifest. I mean, she only has to mention something and it will just be there in front of us. So she's creating or co-creating naturally, right? Yeah. So she could go through the systems now of schooling and university and these systems that are in place that are pretty archaic. And, and based on Victorian principles and just completely yeah, dysfunctional. No, but yeah. the point is, the point <laughs> is, is what I'm trying to say is, is that leadership now is so important mm. that everybody becomes a leader mm. for what they truly believe. Yes. Yes. Because we can't rely on the current leadership, we can't rely on the systems, politics, banking, you know, it's all completely dysfunctional. So we have to create, and I believe that what we're doing now, your business and our, our business and all these spirited business people that are coming to the table, are creating the next level of evolution mm. for perhaps our universe. I mean, that sounds a bit, a bit grand, but but perhaps maybe. And when, then we all evolve together. So I believe there is no blueprint no. as such for what we're doing. I feel that strongly too. Yeah, and that's we, you know that's why I think feel people like you and I are, are stepping forward and, and allowing ourselves to be seen, mm. talking about this type of stuff yeah. because we know it's real. Yeah. Hopefully that will ignite others to go, actually, yeah, I'm like that, but I didn't realise I could talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> and, exactly. And it's like, there's, there's, you know, it's an invitation. Yeah. Come and join the party. Yeah. Get involved in stuff that is yeah. good for people, planet, and profit, yeah. but more importantly, good for our spirit. Yes. Good for source. Yes. Good for longevity. Yes. And, yeah, amazing. And unless we commit to not buying into the systems that are in place that are not serving the whole... Yeah. Well, then we are colluding with it. Yeah. I'm not into colluding no. with it. <laughs> no, 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 absolutely not. Absolutely not. And that's a good, that's a good call to say, you know, that we all, that this is where, where life is bringing us all to now. You yes. know, there's so much craziness going on right now. Yeah. Politically, environmentally, everything. It's like we have a choice right now, people. Yes. Yeah. We really can make a choice one way or the other. We can carry on colluding. Yeah, exactly. In the negative way, or we can actually make a decision to think differently yeah. and to act. Yeah, make a stand, you know, if, stand. If, if, if you're not happy with something, don't keep doing it. Mm -hmm. Change and, 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 and bring bring something to yourself that is better mm -hmm. and creates a better world. And watch the ripple effect around yeah, exactly. you when that happens, yeah. because it's immense. It is, yeah. <laughs> well, we know that, don't we? We know that, <laughs> because it, we're living it every day, and it's just so, so incredible, like, every day is just a wow day. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Funny, I was reading today that... Um, 42 people in the world earn as much money as 50% of the population, of the world's population. So 42 people, I mean that is just Crazy. insane. So what, what kind of a world have we created for people to think that it's okay to earn 50% or to have, to own 50% of the world's resources? themselves. In that small number of people, that's just vile. We've gotten a bit of a mess, haven't we? We have, we have. <laughs> so much wrong, so, so much wrong. That's just crazy. It is, it is, it's completely wild. So what I think is happening is, at the moment is is that we, you know, we, we recognise that we have more power mm -hmm. within ourselves because we've got access to internet and social media and you know all of, the, all of this accessibility. So if we can use that accessibility by, you know, spinning a new narrative, mm -hmm. a new story, a new way of living. Because it's happening, you know, yeah. the bloggers are doing it, and they're selling products and making millions of pounds, and so, you know, the, the network is there, yeah. it's just the story is, is, needs tweaking. Yeah. And actually, I, I, I think I've, that's why I'm in media, because I know how the media has got us into such a mess by getting us to buy more stuff and, you know, loving our partner in a way that Hollywood says we should love it or Greek tragedy says we should love and not truly how we feel we, we could love. Mm -hmm. And it's just got us in such a mess, but it yeah. very quickly unwind that mess with a new story yeah. or with a more loving story. So that's kind of why I've chosen media because it's such a powerful yeah. um, way to reach people. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. Well, that brings me to something now then, because, uh, of course, we've just been talking about spirited business and yes. how 
how incredible it is, how exciting it is to be in this sort of this birthing of this new idea. And of course, you're very involved. You 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 know exactly. You've set up this amazing website now so that people can come and find. But I think um, anyone who's been listening to this, and if it sparks something in you, and you're feeling like actually, yeah, I that's that's my story, or I'd like that to be my story. Um, then I'm going to pass over to you, Jarvis, to explain how, how would people get in touch with you? How would they find you to okay. know more about it? Yeah, well, I mean, the obvious one is, is My Green Pod because anybody can connect with us there. But I've actually set up my own kind of website, which is about trying to help people find their, connect with their true gift and right. how to bring that gift to the world. And that's on my own website, which is jarvissmith.com. Right. So it's... It's just a website where people can connect and book a call with me for 15 minutes. We can have a quick preliminary chat to see if there's, you know, to see if I can help in any way. Okay, and if we cool. can, then we can book more time. So That's cool. So that's, that's like, that's for anybody. That's not even about business. That's just about anybody who wants to kind of find out more. Yeah, I mean, it is for anybody, but, but ultimately do, do kind of in, in the spirited business realm. I mean, yeah. we've been very lucky because in the last 10 years, I've probably worked with thousands of businesses yeah. and they're all ethical businesses with ethical business you know, owners like yourself. And what I've noticed is a real trend that everybody that we've worked with is trying to do business with heart. Mm, yeah. And that for me is a really special network of people mm. that we that which is why they become friends because like I want to hang out with these yeah. people. <laughs> yeah. So the bit that I'm talking about that is possibly missing and maybe not in every case cause clearly, you know, it's something that people are living but not necessarily talking about. But if they want to kind of feel empowered, what I can perhaps do is help them find that, you know, find that uh, way to communicate with their inner guidance or the outer team or the nature spirits or the earth or whatever it might be, but they, they feel truly connected with because I've been given those gifts yeah. through the training that I did with my shaman. So, mm -hmm. you know, it was, it, it's definitely something that I want to be able to give back to the world. Amazing. And then if we can all become superheroes, which is what people would think, mm -hmm. then we can really, really make a difference. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Paris the people. Paris the people. Yeah. <laughs> that was so cool. That was, that was just in my head then. Oh my goodness, how brilliant. This has been such a pleasure, Jarvis. Oh, I you. can't thank you enough for coming and giving us some of your time. It's just so wonderful. Yeah. Again, we could talk all night, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's so exciting. And I'm really, um, I just feel really excited about the future. I think the future is so, so bright right now. And um, it's because there are many lights, I think, there are many people are being lit up inside and yeah. sort of getting up and doing something. Yes. Um, and yeah, may that grow and grow. This has been just such an amazing conversation again. Um, I said, as I said at the beginning of this uh, campaign, just, I'm so excited to have these incredible opportunities in the chair with Tabitha JK. Um, I just feel really blessed to have these these uh, great conversations over and over and over again. It just like gets better every day. So tune in next time and um, see who else we have in the chair. Mm -hmm. <laughs>